Um, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see that the room is uh, still full. Uh, delegates are keen uh, on what is going on. It seems the, 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 the IIK chose very interesting and relevant topics for us because we are all attentive, even at this uh, time of the day. Um, I was thinking it's going to be a challenge for us on the last paper because uh, of the time, we are even beyond the time we were supposed to be completing, but I'm excited because we are all attentive on that. Um, before I introduce the speaker um, of, of the topic, may I start by saying we take the challenge uh, from uh, Mr. John Kamau. Thank you for saying it as it is. But I think also we want, I want to appreciate that the industry is slowly taking bold moves into uh, innovation. We should have been far than where we are, but there are some signs and symptoms of uh, going into the right direction. Maybe to mention, I work with APA Insurance and the CEO for APA Life. But as APA, we've taken a bold appro uh, approach to embrace digital and also use digital uh, to change the business model. Uh, he talked about the mother premiums. And I'm proud to say APA has become the first insurance industry to come up with a monthly motor insurance. You can see, you can refer to the booklet, page number 13. Uh, there is a product there called the Beam and Bamba. You can buy insurance for motor and pay premiums on monthly basis. Of course, we appreciate Higher Aid for supporting us in that innovation. And the approach we've taken is to use the agile approach where you start, take lessons, keep improving from one step to the other. Even MPESA didn't start the way it is now. It started from the basics, but it has evolved and increased the features to the level where and now we have so many features. It speaks to us in our different uh, needs, and that is the approach we used in this. And what is um, the other positive thing is, as we do digital and innovation, we are not getting our intermediaries out of the process. Uh, so our, our product can be, be digitally sold by our intermediaries and also uh, uh, directly. So we are embracing the whole ecosystem. So that is just a brief about us. Uh, but um, back to the paper. After all what we have listened today, I think the paper on human resources sits at the right place because all the other papers we've had uh, since morning, they are all talking about the emerging trends, the new things, the direction we should be taking, the digital, but sitting at the core of that uh, future and progress is what? The human resources. Because if we do not ask ourselves as an industry or as companies, as Customers evolve, as the world evolve, as we face new challenges uh, in, in the market, how does our skill set and our human resources also evolve? And how do we evolve also in our human resource management, even as leaders, so that we are able to shape that future? Because we see the core asset of a company is a human resource. So that cannot be forgotten as we look at how we are evolving, how uh, we are changing, how the trends are changing, how the customers are changing. And I think this was the right topic that uh, IIK chose because it speaks into the rest of the areas uh, that we've talked about. And I think uh, to, to take us through this uh, paper, 
is uh, Ms. Janet Mitu. As I'll read through her profile, you realize that um, she's best uh, placed to address this topic based on our experience, because Janet is a certified human resource uh, practitioner um, and a member of the Institute of Human Resources, IHRM, Kenya. She holds a master's degree in strategic management, a bachelor's degree in education, and a postgraduate higher diploma in human resource management. She has uh, over 15 years of extensive experience as an HR management consultant, trainer, and HR lecturer. Currently, Janice has undertaken um, consultancy assignments, uh, both in the private and the public sector, and NGOs in Kenya and beyond. She has been involved in training on HR management in many areas ranging from employee separation, talent management, organizational development, staff capacity building, strategy planning, performance management, job evaluation, workload analysis, and skills audit, among others. Some of the organizations Janet uh, consultant or as consultant with includes Rafiki Bank, Turkana County Government, Mali UK, South Sudan, uh, Ken Cream Circle, Kenya Conference uh, of Catholic Bishops, Safaricom Investment Circle, County Government of Nyeri, County Government of Kiambu, County Assembly of Kajiando, Kenya Nuts Company, Kedungori Dele Kama Circle, Habib Bank, Enrich Ball Foundation, Engineers Board of Kenya, among others. Um, that tells you how wide the, ex the experience of our speaker is. Uh, she has also engaged as a ge uh, guest speaker in areas of human resources for the past 10 years. Some of the most recent engagements include HR for non HR conference uh, in this year, Uganda Electricity Transmission Company. HR strategic position last year uh, in Uganda, Leadership Academy, Impact of Artificial Intelligence on HR Management uh, webinars on Tech Mind Setup Africa Limited, Management of HR in Schools, uh, Path Africa, and Talent Management HR Symposium 2018, College of Human Resource Management. Uh, I believe that speaks <coughs> into the wealth uh, of experience and knowledge for our um, uh, speaker. So join me in welcoming Janet. Please, with a loud uh, applause. We look forward to learn a lot from you, Janet. Welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about myself. Uh, we have no time for that, but she will be very, very brief. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you have gone for an event and people have spoken. And then the last speaker, when the last speaker is called, he asked, Now, what am I going to say? <laughs> is it? And uh, so uh, people before me have spoken a lot uh, about uh, technology and other uh, emerging trends. But uh, like Madam Chair has said, what we have not told you is who is going to do that. Who is going to do it? That analytics, who is going to do it? Blockchain, who is going to do it? Right? So, what does that mean? 
What is driving the HR spews? What's the conclusion to that? What is driving HR spews? Eh? Technology, is it? So that's what we can conclude from what you have said. That technology actually is one that is driving HR what? HR spews. And therefore, um, I'm going to talk about human resource because like she has said, at the core of everything is human, uh, it's human resource management. It's human resource management. And what we have had so far uh, is that the world is changing. But does it ever stop from changing? There's always been changing, is it? Yeah? And so are the human resource what? Skills. Or are they? Are they changing? We don't know from what I've heard from the speakers is that you have been doing the same thing over and over again. That's what I've heard. That's what is it the one has told us. And uh, that is what um, you know, uh, Kamala has told us. You have been doing the same thing over and over again. So are we really evolving the way the technology is evolving? What is it that we can do differently in terms of human resource? Because at the end of the day, human resource is the driver of the organization. Insurance company. Without people, you have a company. You have a company without people. What would you call that company without people? You can give me a name for that. Yeah? A structure. Yes, you have a structure, not a company. An organization, people make the organization. Without people, you have no organization. Okay? Without people, you cannot sell. Without people, you cannot you know, uh, be creative. You cannot innovate without people. Okay? So what is it that we can do about people with um, you know, the emerging technologies? How can we leverage on that so that we make sure that you know, we move, we evolve as the world evolves? And um, I'm just going to talk a little um, because of the time factor, I will try and be a bit fast, but I'm going to look at um, I'm going to look at a few challenges that are facing the industry, and especially in terms of um, human capital. Uh, then I'm going to look at uh, how technology, how the HR skills have been impacted, uh, especially by technology, because at the end of it, it is just technology which is impacting on us. And then I'll talk briefly also on what studies that, which have been undertaken by different groups tell us, because let them tell us a story. What do they say about what you have been doing in this industry as far as people are concerned? And then, um, I will ask, what does all this mean for us in the, in the insurance industry? And then I'll give you some food for thought. You can think about that uh, tomorrow, I mean overnight, uh, because you have already taken the, the basic of food. Now I will give uh, a food for thought that should drive your thoughts as far as HR is concerned. So topping the list of the challenges in the HR in the, in the, in the insurance industry is the human capital. And a report by PWC actually said that insurers are facing mountain shortages okay, of skills, yet investment in recruitment, training, career development often trails behind other sectors. Does that resonate with anybody? Does it? Look at what um, just IRA, you are a regulator, you did 
And the regulator, you need a, a starting transfer regulator. What did you find out? Regulator, where is the regulator? Oh, you are just here. You had a standing like that? Oh. <laughs> Only three months ago, so don't know about the history. The regulator did a standing, and he sent one of the observations is that there is handling any company that allocates adequate resources to one's enhancement of staff capacity. Does that resonate with any insurer here? Does it? Okay. Of course, we have other challenges, but I'm going to focus on the HR. Of course, we have other challenges like technological ch challenges, which are transforming uh, the shape of the labor market because of the changing uh, you know, trends and demogra uh, demographic uh, shifts. You find that the labor market has changed the whole of you know, the labor market, the skills in the labor market. Of course, we also have the legislative changes also, which require capacity, and we are going to look also into that very briefly. You have other challenges, uh, even as far as competition is concerned. Um, you know, uh, competition uh, intensifying in the face of mistrust. Somebody said that, you know, this perceived. Um, uh, trust, mistrust by the, by the public. Actually, it's a crisis in the, in the insurance industry. But the public do not trust you, especially when it comes to claims. They don't trust you. What can we do? Because there are people still who are going to help us, uh, you know, speak well or give uh, um, you know, positive messages to the public there so that then we can have a good reputation. So what is this uh, changing last landscape? I know we have talked a lot about technology, but I want to look at technology now from the eyes or the lenses of human resource. And we do understand that technology has been changing. Uh, new trends have been, uh, you know, uh, new things have been emerging. There has been substantial changes uh, in skills that are needed for the future of work. That is a fact. That is the changing technology. And I believe that is what we have been talking about in the whole morning today. Changes in technology. You know, everything that we have talked about the whole day is about changes what? By the technology. So if then that is the case, and going by the fact that we have been accused of refusing to invest in people, which means, of course, we have not been changing, then we need to ask ourselves, what are the skills of the future? Because where we are coming from and where we are today, and where we are going in terms of skills, they are worlds apart completely. So from where we are today, where are we going? What skills do we need for the future in this industry? Um, my colleagues talked about AI, artificial intelligence. In this age of technology, everything is, you know, moving towards um, AI. And a research done in UK by Man Kinsey found that technological skills will increase 55% by 2030. How many years are we from today to 20 that? How many years? Seven. And by 20 that, those skills would have increased 55%. Let's look at ourselves and our skills.
data speaks. They are telling us a story, and that is the story. So what does that mean to us? It means that then we should be able to look into our skills, see what the skills we have, see what we can do so that we can align uh, the skills and development with the work of the future. So as to help the organization to have a rent supply of AI enabled skills. That's what we should be thinking about. If we have a HR people here, that is, should be the thought process. How do we enable our people? Most progressive companies here, they have already adopted to a large extent uh, the use of AI. Look at Safaricom, for example. Before, just a few years ago, we used to call Safaricom. I've sent money to the wrong, the wrong Mpesa. I have blocked my SIM card. You know, but these days we don't need the call center. We don't need the call center. All the answers you have them through the what? Through the machine. Is it? You want to unblock to tell you what to do. Okay. So how can we then ensure that we enable our employees and ourselves to have the right skills? That is so new. Those are very, very few, um, those are very few, 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 few years to go. And you know, if you don't move, of course, they want to not stop moving because you are not moving to still continue to move. Do we? Okay. We have talked about big data here, you know, data and analytical skills. And you know, the insurance of the future is going to be data driven, whether we like it or not. We have talked of, uh, you know, blockchain. Uh, we have talked of big data. The, the ones I've been able to listen to it simply tells us that the insurance of the future is going to be data driven. So the, the data is the oil. It's the new oil for the insurance companies to move. Actually, for any organization to move. That is the oil we need now. Because that is what you need to be able to make informed decisions. The, the HR, for example, there's so much data available about people. From the time your employees join the organization to the time they exit, so much data available. But we do not know what to do with that data. We lack the skills to interpret that data to make, uh, you know, to make business decisions. <clears throat> the HR being the person or the driver, you know, the, this is an organization is like a bus. So the HR being in charge of people, although we normally say the CEO is the driver, from the HR point of view, we say the HR is, is manages the what? It's the driver. Because if he does not manage all those passengers in that bus, then the whole bus can be derailed. So what do we need to do? We need to develop those capacity. We need to develop that capacity. And the probably developing that capacity should start with us, the senior managers, so that now it can cascade down to the rest. We cannot continue doing the things the same way and we still want the, the future or we want the present. We are doing things yesterday and we want the employees to do today. I mean, we are demanding today from them, but we are still what? We are still in the yesterday in terms of our processes, in terms of our, our systems, in terms of our uh, technological adoption. We are still in yesterday, but we are demanding today from our, our staff. Organizations that are not going to use uh, data intelligently. 
they are going to be laggards in a competitive environment. Take that for me. If you are not going to know how to use data intelligently, you're going to be laggards in this competitive environment. So you find that uh, the insurance industry, um, you know, they struggle to find the digital and analytical skills. Uh, they need to, to interpret the data. And therefore, most of this data will remain unused. They will remain unused and therefore it cannot be applied to shape the, um, to shape the, the business decisions. And therefore, we are calling upon the business executives, the HR professionals here, and those who are watching online, you know, to make sure that we take deliberate steps to develop, uh, you know, the requisite skills, HR skills, to integrate data into the HR domain. Remote working capability. You know, we think remote working is just telling somebody you stay, you can stay at home and uh, you know borrow letter cars to deal. Yeah? No, that is not the case. Of course, since COVID-19, and the COVID-19 was really a, a wake-up call to most of us. Because this kind of in Kenya and in Africa at large remote working was just a foreign concept. Maybe we knew about work-life balance, is it? We knew about work-life balance, yes. But complete remote working, uh -uh. could you even imagine that you are not coming, going to come to work and they will still pay you? Well, you know, let me just see. But well, we have to imagine that at any particular time, that people will actually stay at home. You know, we get that, this feeling like, like they are not, they are not working. Like you are paying them for free. Like you are paying them for doing nothing. It doesn't matter whether you bring the report complete or not. Yeah. So it was a foreign concept, but of course the COVID nineteen it came with its own benefits, and one of them is that it has accelerated adoption of what technology, and therefore we embraced remote working. But then. Not all of us were able to do that. Again, because if you have been doing things the same way and we have not been up to speed with what has been going on in the world, then when external impact like COVID-19 impacts on us, first of all, we are lost. We don't know what policy to, to put in place as far as each other is concerned. We have our people insured. We don't know how, how the insurance, I don't know whether you insurance, are you, are you, insure, are you insuring people when they are to home? If, if uh, for example, um, somebody was involved in an accident while working at home, are you paying? What was your position in that? How are you able to tell whether that person was actually working because you pay accidents that I can't in the course of doing the work, is it? Now, if I'm working at home and I break my leg, okay? Then I say, I broke my leg when, when I was working. How will you be able to determine whether somebody was really working or maybe he had a party in his house and therefore they were playing music and he broke his leg. You tell me, tell me, I'm waiting. Are you able to establish that? Yeah? Sorry? Have you thought about that challenge? Because we're insuring people. And the way to go is remote work. You can see the statistics 70% 70, 70 of employees feel fully productive working at home. And soon, by the time we get to 20, that is going to be 100%. Then you'll be telling people to come to work eight to, to, to five. What do you know with any employees? So are we starting thinking of how are we going to ensure people? 
20 and 144. What are the challenges that we are likely to face? Because organizations, they are required by the law to ensure their employees. So the onus is on you to pay if something happens. How will you do that? So it means we have, first of all, to build our capability to think creatively, know how to change our systems and the processes so that we're able to track what happens when people are working, uh, working at home. Something else, what we are talking about here, about remote working, is that soon and not later, not when, or I mean not if, it's when that we completely go remote working, um, then it means that that model of working is going to be very, very attractive to many people. Most of us, even here, sometimes we don't feel like waking up to go to work. You know, you wake up, it is raining in the morning, or you, feel, you want it to feel like you want to sleep at it, so is it? Sleep when? Hmm? Yes. So if you know you are working at home, then you can decide to sleep. And then you wake up and you work. It doesn't matter, you can work up to midnight in your house and you'll still be productive. And especially so when we are talking of millennials. Actually, I think we are, we are not even talking about millennials now. We are, we are told millennials, what we are calling millennials now, they are around 40 years, is it? Now we are not, what are we calling? I want to, do they have a new name now? The 25, the that? Yeah, yeah, generation Z, Z. Or they the linked in. Yeah, they are the linked in people. Those are the people we are talking about. They are not even the forties, the millennials we have been thinking about. These are people who want to work when they are at home, in the comfort of wherever they want to work from, whether it's their bed or in their, when they are taking their breakfast, in whatever form of dress they are in. Is it? You wake up in your Kenyansa, you are still doing what? You work. Okay. The ladies, they wake up with their tuko cut, they will still work. They don't have to dress and go to work. Right? Yes. So those are the people we are talking about. And you realize that then this trend is going to be very, very attractive to these people. Very attractive. And then again, the millennials again, by the way, are the most talented. You know, we are told you are quite a digital, quite a number of digital people here. I mean, not digital, analog. That's what we are told by one of the speakers. The millennials and the LinkedIn, they are tech savvy. Okay. So these are people who want the ability to work from anywhere. Because they want to enjoy their life and still work. That is their part. They want to enjoy their life and, and they still work. And then we are still telling them, come to work at age five, and then not even to work in a technological enabled environment is paperwork, files. You know, files, papers and papers and papers. You know, we are attracted by that. So it's time we start thinking. How do we then, uh, you know, uh, reform our processes? How do we uh, reform our systems? How do we keep up, uh, you know, capacitate our employees to work from wherever they are, as long as we are productive? Capacitating means, I, I know during COVID-19, some organizations went to the extent of actually creating offices. In the people's offices, I mean houses, those who had enough space, they provide desk, they provide a laptop, and they connect them to the office. So now we are dealing with the virtual office. I know the organizations that actually recruited and they were orientating, inducting their new recruits virtually through the virtual office. How many of us have done that? Ah, good. A few of us. But what the percentage is that? I've seen less than uh, five hands. What is percentage of that? Uh, those who are good in mathematics. 
What percentage of five hands out of uh, all this? <laughs> zero point zero point zero something, is it? Yes. We we must start thinking. We must start thinking differently. Somebody said we must start thinking out of the box, as far as HR schools are concerned. You see. Research has shown by that uh, this was undertaken also in the US by Massa uh, Global Talent Trends that 91% of companies surveyed were enhancing their flexible working policies and practices. And you know, we, we said that, um, uh, that um, one of our, of our speakers, uh, we said that he gave us a lot of background about developed economies. But those are the development catching up with us. Listen. So you must be able to see what they are doing and then we start thinking of what we need, what we want to do. Because eventually it will come here. Just the, like the way COVID-19 did not start here, but it came here, is it? And we developed the policies about COVID-19. Before then we had, we had uh, HIV policies, another pandemic. Now in the US, there's monkeypox. So when monkey, monkey, the monkey lands here, are we going to develop another policy on monkeypox? You know, we should start thinking like that. Then what does that mean? What policy should we develop that maybe should we take care of pandemics? It doesn't matter what pandemic comes, there's a policy in place so that you don't have to, de to develop a policy for every pandemic that comes. That should be our thought processes as, as, as executives, as CEOs, and as HR practitioners. And we need to have that capability, whether it is from the HR to have that capability to, you know, to think differently. And you see that it doesn't make sense for me to have a policy on HIV positive, to have a policy on COVID-19. I'm going to have a policy on monkeypox or on whatever other pox. I need just one policy, one deal, where all the pandemics can be taken care of. Yeah. We have also talked about Internet of Things. Again, by 2025, there will be up to 1 trillion new things connected to the Internet today. And how many years are we from 2025? In 2022, yes, three years. Three years. What is our capability? Now we have, you know, so many things for that connected. We are ensuring homes, we are, con they are, we are connected to their CCTVs. Uh, we, we have the motor vehicles. Uh, how do we ensure? We have now in developed economies self driving motor vehicles. We just sit there as a passenger. And it will take you wherever you want to go and teach you pack. How are we going to ensure that if it causes an accident, who would have caused that accident? If you're in insurance, who would have caused that accident? Eh? The, the AI. <laughs> because there will be AI enabled, is it? Yeah, the, the eye is the one which is driving it. It will go sense where there's a parking, and they are there. They are being driven in places like the US. So how do you ensure those vehicles? What capacity do you have to be able to do that? Because those are things that are going to be connected. You know, all those things getting connected. We are ensuring people. We have get now. You drive in with the senses that you are vehicle registration number, and then get opens, and you get in. Connected, 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 connected. And these are things we are going to ensure as long as we ensure those things, then we have to be connected. What capability do we have? What capacity do we have to be able to trust that? And I'm sure you know you do customer to know customer service and think. But probably um, one of the things that we may have come across. Is the, is the fact that the customer now wants it easy, you know? I want to apply things online, 
I want to get my claims online. I want my certificate online. I want this and that online. I don't have to come to your office. Right? So, again, there's a study that was done by IL. And what they found out is that the respondents who are mostly, uh, you know, in business executives, he said that the most important uh, single uh, skill set that was cited by enterprises as very important for the future success, that is skills, digital skills, were cited as the most critical for the future success of, of any enterprise. And another one done by PwC is that 77% of CEOs saw the non ability of key skills as the biggest business threat. That is a study, that is a survey which has been done. How do we consume this information to another to fellow to another to, to, to do the, the, the right thing when it comes to skills development? Soft skills. By the way, as technology are evolved, so I'm going to be not only the technical skills, but also the soft skills that you're going to require to be able to interact with that technology. Soft skills like communication with customers, soft skills, even the social skills, you know, we need to evolve even our our soft, our soft skills. What does that mean? It means that we must be able to, um, you know, to, to balance the adoption of technology with the human touch. They must go together, they must be infused. Technical skills and the soft skills. So as the machine automation increases, the work will require more enhanced soft skills to support and steer them. Employers' skills development tools will also need to change to meet the rapidly changing HR needs. What tools are we going to use to, to, you know, to train and develop our employees? In fact, our traditional methods of training are becoming redundant in the face of evolving technology. We have to change the tools that we use now for, 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 for training. Okay. Probably, we may want to use, uh, you know, uh, maybe robotics to demonstrate. Instead of somebody coming to lecture the employees about the AI. Okay. Or you use more advanced training tools like simulation. So, it's not only the skills which are changing, but we must also change the tools that we are using for training. Of course, those are not the only challenges. Again, the regulators here, we have regu regulatory compliance capability. And these uh, regulatory uh, um, you know, changes are, are, they mean also, you know, that we require more complex skills and the capacity to change in order to be able to comply. And the little that I read about the insurance industries that the regulator is now moving from rule-based uh, supervision to, to risk, risk-based what? Supervision. What does that risk-based uh, supervision require of you? You have the IFRS to implement. Do you have the skills? This was supposed to come to an end in 2021. It was extended. Are we, are we complying? Do we or we have like yeah, we do not have the capacity? How far are we complying with that? This 2022 is coming to an end. Is it December? The deadline. Hmm? 
There was supposed to be last year anyway. However, how far have we gone with the compliance with the IFRS? What the challenges have we found in terms of human capacity? Okay. Right? So we should start thinking about that. It's not only that, even uh, you know, our regulatory uh, problems are also um, a problem. And therefore, we need to, to, to capacitate ourselves. So what does all this mean to us? It means that without the talented, skilled staff, and business has no hope of reward survival. Okay? As an industry, we need to rethink our complacency in skills development because that is what is there is in the insurance industry. We have been like self-satisfied with what we have, but we need to rethink that. We need to rethink that. Okay. It means we have to evolve a value proposition that you know um, uh, are more digital or we need to speak to digital workforce. It means that we must develop smart future strategies. As far as people are concerned, it means we must adopt the skills based organization and building a vibrant and uh, resilient pool of talent. It means you must substantially invest in training and development. It means we must use advanced technology to evolve both the employee and our customer experience. And ultimately, the success and the competitiveness of the insurance industry players hinges on how effectively they manage the investment in people and emerging technologies. So the question is, are you ready? Are you ready? Because lights are actually turning green for you to move. If you get late, you remain there. The light will still be red and you remain there. And I give you that as food for thought, just to assess how ready you are as an insurer in terms of your HR skills. Do we have the right talent, the skills, mix of skills that we need we will be required to both understand and understand learning trends? What are our gaps and how wide are they? And if we embrace these trends, what are the HR strategies that we should adopt? Thank you. Can we give uh, a bigger clap? Uh, the question has been drawn to us. Are we ready? Are we ready as uh, leaders? Uh, she's come out clear that the world is changing and so are human skills. She's also told us a company, something that uh, really has uh, come to me as, as, as quite strong, a company without people is just a structure. It's not an organization. And Something else that has come out to us is we have challenges in skills as an industry. And at the same time, we are lagging behind in investments on human resource development compared to the other, uh, the, the rest of the financial sector. So we know where the answer lies as an industry. So we have to invest uh, in career development. Uh, the other uh, highlights have picked from there. She's given us the skills of the future, where the world is ended. And as you can hear from her, all this is aligned to what we've had in the, the other sessions. The, the, the skills of the future, we have to, they, they sit on AI enabled skills, analytical skills, remote working capability. And this remote working capability, something has come out very strong on that issue of remote working capability. Not only on the skills, 
that we require as, as an industry, but also we need to think about how do we innovate our policies because that customer of the future will be the customer who will also be working remotely. So we not only look at just our the skills we need, but also how do we innovate our business models and our policies so that we are also aligned to that millennial who is the customer of tomorrow. Because for sure, whether we like it or not, the customer of today, let me say the customer of today and not tomorrow, of tomorrow is a millennial, isn't it? Yeah, the rest of the generations, we are retiring soon. We've been told the baby boomers are already retired, isn't it? Then the next one is what? Generation X. Yes, the Generation X. I always refer Generation X as, 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 as the parents of the millennials. And, and, and when our generation, I belong to Generation X, when we complain about millennials, I always tell people, but we are the ones who have bad them. Why are you complaining? <laughs> Yeah, they are our products. So we have to embrace and see how we can work on uh, use the strength and the capabilities they have because they do have that. So that is the customer. So if we do not innovate, not only on the business models, on the policies, on the skills, then the customer will not see value in this, in this industry. We've also heard that uh, soft skills will be very key. And we need to strike a balance between um, technology and human touch. Yeah, so the soft skills will be very key. We, I, I believe what has come out uh, or what I've thought when I heard this is how do I start, if I look at the, the staff profile in my company, I see most of the staff sit in the back office. They are doing the rigorous underwriting, the rigorous claims processes. And when she talks about the technology and the soft skills, it tells me that I need to start thinking how now the profile of my staff starts moving from back office to front office, isn't it? Yes, the bulk of the staff should now be a front office and very few in the back office because that is where we are seeing most of the automation and technology coming through. So as an industry and as leaders, we have to start thinking, how do we start aligning? If you are doing any five-year strategy now as a company, if you're not thinking about how you are going to align in five years, the skill sets, the mix so that uh, it aligns with, with the technological advancement, then uh, you get caught up uh, with time. And the other issue she talked about is uh, on the skill set is obviously the regulatory compliance capability. As a principal officer, sometimes I feel overwhelmed by compliance. Yeah, until I, I there are days I tell my risk manager, sit here and tell me where are my gaps in compliance. Because I have RBA, I have IRA, I have KRA, I have no data that has come in, I, data protection, I have uh, unclaimed assets. So many, and sometimes you forget if you do not have a keen tracking and support mechanism. And all these are very important because we are operating in a global market. And to give a global customer confidence, or a global investor confidence, we need to align to all these compliance uh, matters. So it becomes very key uh, as, as a scale as we go forward. And I think uh, she's, uh, it's, it's coming out very clear uh, from what she has, has said. So in conclusion, what I pitch is we need to call concurrently rethink HR skills, innovation, 
as our business model evolves. So we evolve the business model at the same time, the HR skills evolvement for development has also to be uh, in line. It can't be put in the back burner as, as something that will be done after we have uh, changed the business models. And we have to invest in improving our people or developing our people towards the right direction or towards where the future is moving. So that's in summary, uh, that, that's what I can summarize as the, 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 the items have myself picked from uh, our presenter. Due to time, uh, I am going to allow very few, maybe two questions. I don't know whether we have any questions online. We have one online, we can uh, look, uh, tackle the online one, then I can uh, open the floor to, to those who are in house for two questions. So, just thinking with Internet of Things, will, will we be in business as uh, insurers by 2050? Janet, what do you think, sitting from an outsider? Will we be in business? That is from uh, Ruth Kimel. Uh, yes, Ruth, we will be in business uh, because uh, unless, like I said earlier, if we refuse to evolve in the world, then we will not be in the business. But if we do, we will be in business because uh, we will still require insurance. Customers will still require insurance. And you, you know, we, the more the world evolves, the more we are getting even more expensive things, the more we get more understanding of insurance, especially in Kenya here, the uptake is very low, but you know, people are getting enlightened. And um, with that, people, you know, especially life insurance, what, you know, for us, if you take life insurance, it's like you are integrating your own death uh, certificate. But people are getting enlightened. And therefore, it means that, yes, we'll be in business, but we need to see what is ahead. We need to see 10 years ahead and look at the big 10 years ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. So basically, she's saying insurance is still relevant. It's how now we repackage it and we deliver it through the technology. So we'll still be in business if we love it. Uh, can I op uh, open for two questions on the floor? If any? Is the topic um, well understood or it scares us? It's well understood. Okay, uh, if there are no more questions, thank you very much uh, for paying attention. Let's pick the lessons and let us run with them and uh, uh, develop our business for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.